Hi, welcome to the Web Information Systems class on Basics of Information Retrieval. In the past few classes, you have learned about server and client side scripting languages. You view these scripting languages to generate web content. A lot of such content is being added to the web every second. Information retrieval systems play a crucial role in getting us to the content of interest on the web. After finishing this class, you will be able to answer some of these questions. What is information retrieval? What is a postings list? And what is an inverted index? Information retrieval is defined as finding material on the web, which is mostly of unstructured nature. This is motivated by information need of a particular user. Information retrieval is not limited to web search, such as Google search. Email clients, search on your laptop are all examples of information retrieval systems. There has been a constant increase in the unstructured data on the web, and this is a strong motivation to study about information retrieval. Typical queries on database may be exact match, or it can be range queries as shown here. However, with web, the data is unstructured. So we need to support free text query. However, this notion that no data is completely unstructured. For example, this particular slide here has title and also the content, a set of bullet points. So there is some implicit structure that's already existing. You can probably think about queries that would look for certain content in the title of the slide and also the body of the slide. You can also think about queries with regular expressions. Here are the two assumptions that we make for the information retrieval system we talk about. We talk about a set of documents called collections and we assume that this collection is static. The goal is to retrieve information as needed by the user. A typical search model conceptualization is shown here. On the right hand side is a concrete example of a user task and its manifestation in a query. It is evident from this example that there may be a lot of misconceptions at each step. Here are the two metrics that we use to evaluate our information retrieval system. The first one is called precision. So let me define what is precision. Precision is a fraction of documents that are retrieved and also being relevant. Recall is a fraction of documents in the collection that are relevant and also retrieved. Let's take an example. Capital R equal to 20, which I call it a set of relevant documents have small r equal to 40 which are a set of retrieved documents and I have this set called r and r. This is a set of documents that are relevant and retrieved which is to be 10. Let's assume these are the counts so here is how we compute precision. Precision is capital R plus small r divided by small r. So here, sorry, instead of plus, this is an. So here this is 10 divided by small r which is 40. So this is 0.25. So this is precision. How do we compute recall? So recall is equal to the numerator remains the same r and r divided by 
So instead of retrieve documents, we have capital R, which is the relevant documents. So here it is 10 as usual in this numerator and capital R is 20. So recall is 50%. One way to track occurrence of terms in a document is by using incidence matrix. In subsequent slides, I'll give you details on term document incidence matrix and discuss the feasibility of using it in an information retrieval system. Say you are a fan of Shakespeare and want to find out which of his play contains the word Brutus and Caesar and not Calpurnia. If you are familiar with Unix, you could probably use a grep command to look for these terms. And the not query can be accomplished by stripping off lines that contain Kalpunya. Does it really scale? This may work for Shakespeare's play. However, web contains petabytes and zettabytes of data, so grepping is not an option. So let's consider an alternative for grepping. Here is an example of a term document incidence matrix. So here on the left hand side are the terms and the text in blue refers to the name of Shakespeare's play. The matrix here is populated based on presence or absence of the term here on the left hand side. One refers to the presence of that particular term in this play. Zero refers to the absence of that term in the play. Let's consider an example of a query to be processed. Brutus and Caesar but not Calpurnia. So let's assume this is the query we need to process. How do we answer this query? We take vectors for Brutus and Caesar and complement of Calpurnia and we, and we do a bitwise AND. So 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. This refers to Brutus entry here. This 11011 refers to Caesar's entry here. And the last one here refers to the complement of the Calpurnia entry here. So if you take this line here and then complement it, you would get this these set of uh, bits here. So we do an AND operation and we end up with 100100. So what does this mean? This means that the query Brutus and Caesar, but not Calpurnia, results in these two plays as a result of our search. And here are the excerpts from those two plays. Let's do a thought experiment by extending the document collection to a million documents. Let's assume that each of these documents would contain around 1000 words. The disk space is around 6 GB for this kind of collection. Let's assume that there are around 500k distinct terms in the entire collection. So how would our term document incidence matrix would look like? It would have around half a trillion entries including both zeros and ones. However, there are less than a billion ones. So this is extremely sparse. So is there a better way to represent a document instead of using the term document incidence matrix? It turns out to be yes. So let's explore this new, new type of representation in the next few slides. So in the subsequent slide, we define inverted index with concrete examples. So what's an inverted index? For each term, we store all the documents that contain the term T. We refer each document by a unique ID called the doc ID. So we assume that every document has a unique, do unique doc ID. So here is an example of an inverted index. An inverted index 
consists of dictionary so let me just mark what's a dictionary here so this part is called the dictionary this contains a set of terms it also contains a list containing doc IDs in which dictionary terms appear for example the first entry here in the dictionary is Brutus and Brutus appears in documents 1, 2, 4, 11, 31, 45, 173, 174 so all these numbers here in this list are nothing but doc IDs let's consider what kind of data structure you'd use to store the list of documents that contain a particular term in the dictionary let's assume you use fixed size arrays what happens if a word Caesar is added to document 14 in this case the doc ID 14 has to be added to this list so fixed length arrays are not suitable for representing this particular list a variable length postings list is much more suitable than a static sized postings list the variable size posting list can be implemented using linked lists or variable length arrays the choice of implementation depends on the trade-off between the space and ease of insertion here are the sequence of steps you may have to carry out to construct an inverted index the first step is to collect all the documents you would like to index each document is turned into a list of tokens linguistic processing is carried out on these tokens producing a list of normalized tokens normalized tokens are part of a dictionary with pointers to the list of document IDs in which these tokens appear tokenization is a step of breaking down sentences into tokens we may have to consider punctuations like John's for example when we tokenize there may be multiple syntactic ways to refer to the same thing for example u.s.a. or usa both of them refer to the same thing so we need to normalize stemming refers to creating root words from multiple forms of the same word removal of stop words is crucial because these don't contribute to the information need of a user so let's consider the indexer step so here are the two documents doc1 and doc2 they are tokenized to create a list of terms and each of those terms are associated with the document ID that the term actually came from the next step is to sort the terms so the first we saw the first step is to sort all the terms so here you can see that the terms are sorted based on alphabetical order once we sort the terms we also sort the doc IDs associated with the terms the next step is to create the dictionary and the postings list we take the sorted list of terms we also add a field called document frequency so this shows that how many times this particular term appeared in the documents for example Brutus appeared in two documents and here's the postings list for Brutus so let's see where we have to pay for storage so we need to store the terms we also need to store the doc frequencies the pointers from each of those entries to the postings list and the postings list themselves so when we consider information retrieval implementation we need to be mindful of what is the efficiency of index so how efficient is the indexing and what is the amount of storage that's required to store the index now that we have built an inverted index let's consider processing queries posed to the information retrieval system so how do you process queries is our focus right now
Let's consider an AND query. Here the sequence of steps involved in processing this query. So here are the dictionary elements. So let me just mark the dictionary entries. So Brutus is a dictionary entry. Caesar is also a dictionary entry. And here are the here is the postings list for Brutus and postings list for Caesar. So the elements here they refer to the doc ID. So these are the unique representation or unique IDs for each document. So the documents 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 28 cont contains Brutus. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and 34 contain Caesar. So the next step to process this Brutus and Caesar query, we need to intersect these two lists. The intersect operation requires us to walk through the postings simultaneously in time linear to the number of postings entries. Note that we assume there is a sorted order of document IDs in this list. Here is an algorithm that implements intersect operation. We start with an empty answer list to hold document IDs that satisfy the AND operation. P1 and P2 are the pointers and point to the beginning of the postings list. If the doc IDs pointed to by the pointer match, we collect doc ID in the answer list and increment both the pointers. Since it's a sorted list, we can set up this type of comparison. Look at some facts about Boolean retrieval model and consider preliminary query optimization techniques as an example. Boolean queries are precise. They utilize AND, OR, and NOT operations to join query terms. Surprisingly, many real-world systems use Boolean retrieval. Let's investigate if the order of processing matters. Concretely, consider the query here. Brutus and Calpurnia and Caesar. Here are the dictionary entries and these are the postings. We want to minimize the comparisons. So we want to process these AND queries based on the increasing order of frequency. That is, the order of processing should be increasing order of doc frequency. Calpurnia and Brutus should be processed first. So let me just mark that. So there are two entries here. Right? So there are seven entries here. So there are eight entries here. So we start with increasing order. So we take two, so which is this particular postings list and take seven. So this postings list. So we take these two postings list and do the AND operation. Then we take the Caesar posting list and do the AND with the resulting operation or the resultant bits here. So let's consider a more generic case. So what do you think should be the order? We sum the frequencies within the OR terms and we use the same principle as we used in the previous slide. So we start with the increasing order of document frequencies. So here is an example. So let's say you have to process the query here. So let's see, tangerine and R trees. So we need to sum up 
dot frequency is here which is it's around 3 6 3 okay and this particular term or term results in 3 7 9 okay and the last term here results around 300k so so this is approximate document frequencies in which tangerine or trees occur similarly for these two terms here so now what should be the order of processing so we it should be the increasing order so we take kaleidoscope or eyes tangerine or trees we do an AND operation between these two. The resultant expression after we AND is again AND with this particular term here. So what next? I didn't cover the vector space model which is a much sophisticated way of uh, representing documents and queries. So this will be discussed in the class. Also, I would give you a demonstration of Lucene Java API used to index documents. I'll also give you a search interface with Lucene Java API. I'll discuss more about the assignment, uh, which is pretty exciting, where you crawl a bunch of web pages and then you create your own search engine based on uh, the crawl dataset that you have uh, gathered. Okay, thank you.